3,000 years ago, in what is modern-day Lebanon, lived one of the most sophisticated people of the ancient world, the Phoenicians. At its height, the Phoenician Empire rivaled the great civilizations of ancient Egypt, Greece and Rome. But is there a dark side to this enigmatic people? Many archaeologists and historians believe they also sacrificed their own children in horrifying religious rituals. In times of war, famine or pestilence, the Phoenicians sacrificed their own infant children. In crises of great danger, it was a custom of the Phoenicians to give freely their best-loved children in sacrifice as a ransom to the avenging demons. Those given up were slaughtered in mystic rites. The Phoenicians, it was said, sacrificed their children to appease their bloodthirsty gods. Baal Hamon and his wife, Tanit. Baal and Tanit took many forms. They could have an animal face or be human. Baal was often represented as a disc and a crescent. His wife Tanit as a triangle with outstretched arms. Some historians believe Baal was the root of the word Beelzebub, who today we associate with the devil. According to the Greek and Roman accounts, the ceremony of child sacrifice began with the parents handing over their baby to the high priest to be anointed with perfume and oils. Meanwhile, the sacrificer, an assistant priest, made preparations for the baby's death. <laughs> The priest carried the baby at the head of a procession to the sacrificial altar in a sacred precinct known as a tofet. These grinning masks have been found in Phoenician sites. They were probably hung on walls to ward off evil spirits in the next world, but some experts believe they were worn by the parents to hide their grief. Even the Romans, not known for their humanity, claimed to be shocked at a religious ceremony where babies had their throats cut. They would bring to the altars children whose age evokes pity, even among enemies. To think that men were so barbarous, so savage, that they gave the name sacrifice to the slaughter of their own children. Some accounts imply the dead baby's face was covered with a grinning mask before it was thrown onto the funeral pyre. When the flames fall upon the body, the limbs contract and the open mouth seems almost to be laughing. Thus it is that the grin is known as sardonic laughter. And the whole area before the statue was filled with a loud noise of flutes and drums, so that the cries of the wailing should not reach the ears of the people. The blood of the child was collected and used to anoint the altar. They sometimes sprinkled children's blood upon the altars. They thus implored the favor of the gods through the blood of those sacrificed. During the height of one orgiastic rite, Phoenician men sometimes castrated themselves in an attempt to emulate their goddess Astarte. Astarte was a goddess of fertility and famous across the ancient world. Perched high on a mountain, 
Erice in Sicily was once the site of a shrine to Astarte. According to the Romans, behind these walls, the Phoenicians practiced a ritual of sacred prostitution. This Norman castle was built on the site where, in Phoenician times, the vast temple to Astarte stood. According to Roman and Greek historians, it was common practice among Phoenician aristocrats to bring their virgin daughters to the temple when they reached the age of puberty. The girls had to go to the temple of Astarte and stay there and be lain with strange men. The high priest would then force them to have sex with visiting foreigners who paid the temple handsomely for the privilege. The stranger was viewed as an emissary from the gods. After intercourse, the girl had made herself holy in the sight of Astarte and went away home 